All my bags are packed, I'm ready to go, I'm standing here outside your door. I hate to wake you up, to say goodbye. Hey there, it's Jamie Anderson, and in this video I'm going to talk about jam etiquette. Because if you've been playing for a little while, your next step is to play with other people. And some people are like, oh my gosh, I'm not gonna be able to jam, it's gonna to be too hard. Well, I'm gonna give you some tips uh, here so that you can join almost any jam. Now, this is Lee Walsh. She's gonna be joining me to help demonstrate some of the finer points of jam <laughs> etiquette. And uh, we played a little bit of Leaving on a Jet Plane. If you wanna learn how to play that song, I do have a lesson for that to finger pick it and to strum it, and I'll put a link underneath this video. And you'll notice that when we were just playing, Lee was finger picking it and I was strumming it and that's one of the ways that you can jam with somebody if you want to do something different. Now there's two basic kinds of jams. There's an informal jam where you just get together with your friends and there's a more formal jam like the kind that some organizations plan. So first I'm going to talk about informal jams. So in informal jams it's a good idea to get together with your friends and decide how the song is going to be structured because if you all just start playing chances are pretty good you're all going to be in different keys and someone's going to take a lead break but someone else is going to think well should I take the lead break and if you have it all laid out ahead of time it's going to make a difference so what if one of the things you don't want to do is for two people to play a lead break at the same time because it could sound like this migraine that sounded like that one time. <laughs> I did, yes. <laughs> yeah. I did too. So if you plan it out ahead of time and we decide I'm playing the lead, it's going to sound better. It'll sound more like this. formal jam you might need to stand back and observe them to see how they run the jam. It could be uh, a blues jam at your local pub, it could be a jam put on by your local bluegrass organization, everybody runs it differently so it's really a good idea and it's a really nice thing to do to figure out how they do it. Sometimes in a blues jam they'll already have uh, a house band and you just get up with your guitar or sing or whatever you're going to do and they're your backing band. Sometimes they require that you bring music. I've been to jazz jams where everybody just brings the music for a jazz standard and the band plays it. It's a really cool thing. I've been to bluegrass jams where they have several different jams going on at once. In one room they've got the intermediate jam and in another room they've got the beginning jam. So if you've just learned how to change chords without stopping, go into the intermediate room if you want to listen. Don't try to play with them. You'll just make them angry. You don't want to see an angry fiddle player. You really don't. Um, go into the beginning room and very often not only will you find people at your level, but you'll find people that might want to help you with that difficult chord or with that difficult passage that you've been trying to get. If you're not sure of the song that they're playing, whether it's an informal jam or a more formal jam, play quietly outside the circle. I have played lead to some songs and I had no idea what notes I was playing, but because I sat in the back and played quietly, I could figure it out. Another thing to do is to find the person that plays the same instrument you do and seems pretty knowledgeable, or maybe it's the band leader, and follow them. So for instance, uh, Lee's going to play Leaving on a Jet Plane again, and let's say I'm a beginner and I'm not really sure what all the chords are and I don't have the music in front of me, but I'm really good at the G chord. So every time the G comes around, I'm going to play that with her. Turns out I know the D chord too, so I added that. So you're still jamming, right? You don't have to play every strum and every chord that the person playing does. Uh, it might be a little harder if you're a guitar player and you're trying to follow the banjo player or the fiddle player, but even then you can listen to what they're doing and you can tell if what you're playing 
fits with what they're playing. Another thing that you can do when you're jamming with people is to play an arpeggio if they are strumming. An arpeggio is like finger picking with a flat pick. It can also be done with your bare fingers. And it's uh, a different way to join. That's what we were doing at the beginning, right? So Lee was finger picking, which is also an arpeggio, and I was strumming. So uh, this time we're going to reverse that. I'm going to play an arpeggio and she is going to strum. <laughs> picking pattern necessarily, I was just picking out the individual notes of the chord. If you want to take the plunge and learn to play lead, all you have to do is learn a major pentatonic scale. It's only five notes. Leaving on a jet plane is in the key of G, so I'm going to show you a major pentatonic scale in the key of G. So you're going to start on the third fret with your third finger, then you're going to play the open fifth string, then press down on the second fret on that same string, open fourth string and then on the second fret of that same string then an open third string then on the second fret open second string this time you're going to go to the third fret after that and then the bottom string so here it is a little faster Notice that I was going down and up with my right hand. That's really important. That'll make it sound a lot smoother. All right, so here's the diagram for the G major pentatonic scale. All right, so here's a close-up of the G major pentatonic scale. I'm starting here on the third fret with my third finger. Then the next string down on the second fret. Open. Then second fret. Keep going. All right, so my pick hand is going down and up. Okay, so let's try that again. Try it backwards. All right, so let's put some of those ideas into practice. Uh, Lee is going to play the chords for Leaving on a Jet Plane, and I'm going to play arpeggios along with her. And then after the first chorus, I'm going to play a lead part with a major pentatonic scale. You ready? Okay. All my legs are bent, ready to go on. I'm standing here outside your door. First I did some arpeggios with her and then I joined with her on the strum for the first part of the chorus 
And then for the second part of the chorus, I played a single strum at the beginning of each measure. And then I played some lead using the G major pentatonic scale. There you go, a simple lead. Now if all this is going by you too fast, turn the video off and study the major pentatonic scale and learn how to play that. That's it. How about that? You've learned how to play lead, you've learned how to jam. I'm Jamie Anderson, thanks for joining me. Be sure to join me for my other lessons. I have over 300 lessons for beginning and intermediate guitar players, as well as ukulele and mandolin. If you want to support what I do, please buy me a coffee. There'll be a link somewhere in this video, perhaps underneath it. JamieAnderson.com is where you go to find out more about my individual music. Thanks to Lee Walsh for joining me. Thanks, everybody.